Hi, I'm Lucas and in this video I'm going to talk you through how blocks work in Rome research. And the reason I'm doing this is that for many people starting out with Rome research, the whole block business is kind of confusing and I want to give you a little bit of a perspective about why blocks are great and why they're super useful compared to other ways of dealing with text in different apps and contexts. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a small example of how blocks are different than using text in Microsoft Word, for example. And so consider how text usually works, right? Both in a book or an article or a paper you read somewhere and you want to refer someone to a specific part of that thing, right? Um, usually what we do is we use page numbers, right? So we use we say on page 25, uh, like the second paragraph, right? And that's a very brittle way of referring to text, right? Because where a specific paragraph is might, for example, change in a book between editions, right? If you have a book that was printed in 1960 and then it was printed again in 1990, for example, then the same paragraph, depending on the book size or the script size or whatever, can be in different places, right? Um, referring someone to a specific text bit can be quite difficult. And to illustrate, we can jump into Microsoft Word here, right? So on the left, I have the text of a speech made by John F. Kennedy. And you see it stretches on over three, four pages. And if I now want to refer to a part of that document, I um, can copy it over if I use it in my own text, I can do copy paste, but if I was to print this, for example, or the person who wrote it did some changes and they were talking about different versions of the same speech, then where that was could be difficult to identify, right? And so what I have here, a fictional report on the greatest speeches of all time, because I think the decision to go to the moon is one of the coolest speeches in the world. And so the, the paragraph um, I'm using in this fictional report here would be, we choose to go to the moon. Let's listen in really quickly how that sounded in the original. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Awesome. And now I copied that over, right? And I'm, I, I can add here that this in, in my copied over from the web version, this would be, let's say, page three. But what does that really mean, right? I'm, trying to guide people to where to, to where to go based on arbitrary uses of location, right? Because what happens if I select all this text and I use different text size here, now suddenly we're way, way, in, in a way different location than we were originally, right? So page identifier is, is not super useful if we think about it. Right? And so in Rome Research, that works differently. When I go to uh, the public Rome that I have, which you can find as Cortex Futura, and I have the same fictional report here about the greatest speeches of all time, I can now really easily find this block. We choose to go to the moon just by 
hitting search and then it gets transported over. But what you also saw is that this specific paragraph has a unique identifier, right? And now I can link you under this video specifically to that single paragraph. And that's quite magical if you think about it, because it's not just in your own writing, where it's now also interesting to see, okay, where else was this used? If I reorder things on that page, this identifier still stays the same. If I change the text size, it stays the same, right? So nothing changes and I will always be able to point you or myself or someone else to that exact snippet. And now the other thing is that Rome graphs have unique names, right? So I have Cortex Futura and you can't make your own Rome database with slash Cortex Futura. That means I can link you, because my graph is public, to that specific paragraph in my Rome research database. And that means we kind of have once we can really easily embed stuff between Rome databases, a system that is kind of like street addresses, right? So if I live in New York in on Fifth Avenue, right, awesome, and I have one specific place I live in, right? And you can send a letter to me from anywhere in the world and it will find its way to me and the same for you for example and in that way if you want to think about it Rome graphs are kind of like countries and pages can be like cities and blocks are specific addresses in the city right and there's always only be going to there's always going to be only one person reachable at one specific address, right? Of course, many people can live inside one building, but you have a letterbox addressed to you specifically. And Rome blocks kind of work the same, right? You can think of them as specific street addresses for text content and not just unique to your graph, but actually across all the Rome research graphs in the world. And I hope that metaphor, that analogy, kind of helps you in thinking about blocks, right? They allow us to make references to really specific pieces of writing or content. And that is why Rome is a little bit different than many other apps, right? In Word, Again, there's no specific way to refer to this paragraph in this Word document in on my computer or wherever, right? It's arbitrary, right? If I reorder um, um, paragraphs, let me find it again. See, it's hard to find it again, right? Whereas in, in Rome, all I have to do is type, we choose, to go to the moon and boom, there it is, right? But in Word, I kind of have to scroll around. Oh, okay, where, where was it, right? And here it is. And now if I change this, and we were here on page two actually, and I put it arbitrarily here, and now this reference, page three, is incorrect, right? So I would have to find a way to update that again. And if I make changes here, right, if I bold to go to the moon, right, that stays in this paragraph, right? It does not get updated here. Where in Rome, if I jump to the block and do to the moon and I bold it, it gets updated everywhere, right? Because it is transported. That single uniquely identified block is transported. 
that's a quick, hopefully quick and easy to understand tour of blocks and why they're different and how they're different than text blocks in, in other apps. And I hope that helps you in understanding Roam a little bit better. If you want more content on Roam, subscribe below, like this video if you like, and we'll talk soon.